Hey friends, I'm glad you're back again this week. Today's episode is sure to be a powerful one. Did you know that 70 million people worldwide, 30 million people alone in the United States, struggle with an eating disorder? The average onset is between the ages of 12 to 25, but it can affect anyone at any age. The most commonly known disorders are anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating disorders, but many people's struggles with food issues are undiagnosed or untreated. I'm joined today by Terry Earlbeck. Terry is the creative genius behind Grace Harris Collection, which began as an Etsy shop, but quickly grew into quite the internet sensation when she began posting on Instagram two years ago. On the show today, we discuss Terry's rapid rise to Instagram fame, the pressures that came with that, and the control issues she struggled with in regard to food and eating. If eating disorders or food issues are a struggle for you, please be careful when listening to today's episode. I'm grateful for Terry's vulnerability here, and I think today's show is going to be very enlightening. So, without further ado, Let's dive in. Hi, Terry Earlbeck. How are you today? Hey, Christy Lowe. I'm amazing and Good. tickled to talk to you. Like this feels like such an indulgence to just plan out this time and just get to talk to one of my favorite people. I know. Well, and um, telling, I will let everybody in on a little secret. Terry and I have known each other for a number of years, and we have shared more time in basketball gyms than either of us could probably count with our sons <laughs> playing basketball together. So this is just, this is a treat on so many levels, my friend. So I get to have a conversation with you and not have to try to pretend to watch a basketball game at the same time. Like we just get to yeah, focus. We just be like, oh, yay, <laughs> clap. Uh, uh, was that my kid? <laughs> I don't know how many times you'd be like, hey, that was Cameron that scored. I'd be like, oh, great. <laughs> but it always seemed like whenever you and I would have a conversation, it would just be these like rich, deep conversation. We would never have shallow conversations yes. with each other. And I don't, I don't do that with anybody else. Like it's all you. Like you were so, you were like the most curious you're always so interested in everybody else and like so interesting to talk to. Like, I feel like you have really fallen, to, fallen into like what your calling is. Like, this is so perfect for you. I know I've always been a talker. So, I mean, like doing a podcast, like the perfect way to, to get to talk to people. So, um, okay, well, let's tell the listeners a little bit about you. I could talk uh, for days about you, but I want them to hear from you about who you are, what you do, and what are some of the loves in your life? So I'm Terry Earlbeck, and oh, the loves in my life, well, um, I have my husband, obviously, Brian, is the biggest love in my life, and um, I have two kiddos, and one that's off at college. We have very similar life situations right now, similar age kiddos. One's out of the house. I have one still at home who has one more year in school. He's a junior. His name is Ben. And then I have Annie Grace, who is about to be 20. My goodness. I know. I know. And I don't know how that happened. I'm, I'm glad they're getting older, but we're not. Right? Totally not. <laughs> <laughs> and so she is off at Oklahoma State University. So I've got one that's pretty far away, which has been, we've, I mean, just, I've had so much change in the last year, the last two years, a lot. I've, I've made a major career change. I have been mm -hmm. an interior designer for 20 years um, and have loved every minute of that. And we, in fact, that's how we very first met yes. was at yes. your house. Yes. <laughs> Terry, <laughs> Terry came over the like the week after I moved in and started helping me pull together my rooms. And I mean, I, I just I had always heard such wonderful things about you from some of my other friends. And then whenever mm -hmm. I met you, it was like, oh, I get it now. I totally understand. <laughs> and your house is adorable. And our styles are so similar, like yes. traditional, yes. but we love a little bit of fun and a little bit of yes. color. And well, and so it was so fun working room. with you. I've gotten to have fun here in my office with just like bright colors because yeah. the rest of my house is very traditional, blue and white and gingham. And, and this is like so just 
wild compared to the rest. So I've had so it's much very fun. chic. Thanks. It's very you're fun. such a you're a green girl, right? Are you like mm, it's I green like your favorite things. color? You look so good in it. Thank you. Yeah, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> well, okay. So about two years ago, like in November, it was was it two years ago? Was it 2021 or 2022 when you started uh, started my business? Mm -hmm. It was 2021. So it's it's coming up on two years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. Can you believe that? Okay. So <laughs> I, I'm going to fill in some people. You know, I've got people that listen all over the place. And have you, if you know someone that like is just excellent in what they do when they leave their job there are people that mourn that okay and i remember when i heard that terry was leaving her she had been interior de decorating for businesses and homes and she had clients that just i mean grieved literal there was like weeping and gnashing of teeth whenever you <laughs> is there stuff you know that i don't know <laughs> there, girl there were people that were some there was some sadness i'm just gonna tell you <laughs> because what you what she did you went into you began an online uh business on basically on instagram at first right and I and did. with the shopify and and you you took this huge leap of faith and, and that was originally why i was going to ask you to come on the show because i had watched you for the past couple of years just blooming and exploding and it just totally stepping into what God had called you for this new season. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to have Terry come on the show and talk about this, this little, this little influencer business that she started, because you, my friend, have just, you're just taking the uh, decorating world by storm, shall we say? Oh, thank you. Well, and the whole influencer thing, I don't know about that. And that was not at <laughs> all so ever comfortable. Oh. It, and it wasn't at all ever my intention. It, you know, taking the leap of faith that I did, it took probably a good year of like inner work. Like I hate to say there was like a journey or something like kind of cheesy yeah. like that, but there, there was, I had to do a lot of inner work to get to a place where I could even, where I could even consider disappointing my clients and my friends, like these are my people, you know, I worked in their homes for years and we, you know, raised kids together and, you know, they're all of my friendships were my clients um, and they had trusted me with so much. And so it was really difficult to say no and even more difficult for me because of my personality type. Like I really struggle with people pleasing which was the reason that making a move was so good for me is why I needed to do it. You know, like I just kind of gotten into a bad place where a project can be so beautiful and perfectly done, but it was never perfect enough for me or I couldn't feel a sense of accomplishment until that, that client was just elated you know, maybe it didn't matter how I felt. I just needed them to be happy over all else, you know, and that had nothing to do with the clients. That was my own hang up, my own kind of, I don't know, not illness, but it can end up being can really be toxic. Yeah, de most yeah. definitely. Oh, um, God has really sense. opened my eyes to a lot of idols <laughs> that I have in my life. <laughs> Yeah, which might be why we're here today, right? Um, yeah, for sure. You, you know, I told I told them just a second ago that, you know, part of the reason why I wanted to ask you on the show was because you had this business that was just taking off. And so, I, I, and I'm, I'm going to peel back the curtain here for just a second, okay? A, a lot of times people come to me and they say, hey, can I come on your show? Or there's times where I go to people and I'll say, hey, listen, God has put you on my heart. Would you like to come on my show? And, you know, I hold it very loosely. I just, I hold it very open-handed, you know, whatever, whatever God puts in, he can take away, et cetera. And when I ask you, you were like, yeah, I'd love to come on your show, right? And sometimes people sign up immediately. Like I'll send them the Calendly link and then, you know, like we're on the schedule like a week later and, sometimes people just don't sign up for one way, reason or another. There's one girl that has this incredible story that she has said yes to me like four times. She has still not signed up for the Calendly link. It's totally fine because I know that God holds 
the perfect timing and the perfect story. And so I just, I just leave it. I, I make the ask sometimes, and then I just trust that God, God holds it. Well, when you didn't sign up, I thought, huh, she's busy. Well, life goes on, you know, or it's not the right time until what a month ago when you reached out to me and you said, if the offer still stands, I would like to come on the show, but it might not be for the same reason you think it is. So talk to the list to tell the listeners today just what changed and what was happening that prompted that text. Sure. Well, when when you first asked me, I, I don't think I'm the only person that felt this way. But I think I felt like what, why me or like, what, what do I have that would be so interesting that somebody would want to listen to me talk for an hour. And so that's kind of, I don't know what it, imposter syndrome or I don't know what you want to call it, but like, yeah. I just felt like, well, no, not me. Like, I don't have that, that much to talk about. Um, and I just, I don't know. I just couldn't commit, but I kind of, I don't know. I've had a lot happen personally and, uh, you know, just not anything major. I don't want to make it sound like my life is some huge struggle or, but God has just opened my eyes to a lot of things that a lot of priorities that I've had out of whack (laughs) and a lot of my habits and rules that I have for myself that are not serving me any longer that I'm letting go of. So with my business, probably about a year after I started was when things really started taking off. It, it was wonderful, but it didn't feel as wonderful as I expected it to. A lot of it, especially the visibility that I had with my Instagram account taking off was never what I planned. And it's really not my personality to be so public. I had never had, you know, through my years of of designing homes, I never really photographed anything. I never posted anything. I didn't have a website. Like I had zero presence. Like if you tried to find me, you could not. (laughs) Like you had to know somebody to find me or to see my work. Um, You had to go to their house, you know, that's pretty much the only way to see it. And so I had some friends that were so encouraging that had seen some photos of my work that I'd shown them just like on my cell phone. And they were like, oh my gosh, you need, you know, you need an Instagram account. You need this. And then, and one of my big clients it had encouraged me from the beginning before I even really understood what Instagram was, that I needed to at least be on there, you know, scrolling through, if not posting something. And so, and so that's like really life changing for my line of work, you know, to be able to go and see inspiration every day and have community. And, and so I was more of a consumer of Instagram, not a poster. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, I feel that. (laughs) And so I liked my anonymity. I didn't even comment on anything. I wouldn't even heart anything. And so when that part of my business took off, I thought it would feel amazing, but it didn't. It felt out of control. And it felt like, I felt like there were a lot of people wanting a piece of me or, you know, like there wasn't enough of me to go around because I'm starting this business and I'm doing everything, you know, I'm making the product, I'm packing it, I'm marketing it. And I, God is so good. Like it is, you know, I started with a little Etsy shop and I researched the heck out of it. You know, I'd be making orders and I would be listening to YouTube videos on how to grow your Etsy business, how to, on SEO, you know, how to get discovered by the search engine and, you know, researching nonstop. And, Mm. you know, and I would listen to these videos like how to have a six figure Etsy business in your first year. And, and I actually did that. Like I I blew it out of the water. I didn't make six figures. Don't misunderstand me there. I didn't make much money at all, but I sold a lot. (laughs) I sold an awful lot. It took off Um, fast. uh, Which was so fun, but just so much work. And as somebody, we, you and I always talk about our Enneagram. And so I'm a one, if anybody else is into the Enneagram and you're a seven, right? I'm a seven. seven? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But see, I go to one under stress. Do, do you know that? Okay. 
want That's your wings get very perfectionistic when we're under mm-hmm. stress and like we want to do things right like whenever we're really trying and like we're under stress oh yeah oh yeah so I'm so that's where that. i was yeah oh that's where i was yes you know just excellence or nothing oh yeah was the only way i would operate and and everything in my life kind of suffered i didn't realize it so much at the time but i wasn't stopping i wasn't stopping to eat I was working through, you know, especially this time of year, like when I started doing Christmas decor for clients, I was doing that during the day, but I was getting up at like 5 a.m. in order to get together my Instagram post or make a reel or make a wreath. And I would come home at night and then I would pack my orders. And so it was like super long work days, was not prioritizing sleep or my time, you know, quiet time with the Lord or you know, I still managed to do some of it. I think I really would have gone off the rails if I hadn't, you know, I, I did still manage to do some, you know, like quiet time, but not, I didn't prioritize it. You know, I didn't go for a walk. I didn't, Yeah. you know, I just didn't stop. Just, other things were taking priority and your, your big rocks, the big rocks were not getting taken care of first. Because I was too busy. I was in such a hurry. There was so much to do, so much to do. And so I, during this time, thought that if I just could skip meals, that I would have more time in the day. And boy, I did. And so I was fasting. See, it's it's super cool because in the name of wellness now, <laughs> you no can fasting. just not eat and, and call it fasting. And it's it's wellness and it's perfectly healthy. And people look to you like, oh, you're so good. Uh-huh. You know, like... You know, sticking to the whatever plan. So yeah, I, that's, that's what I would do is just keep working and not eat. And, and so looking back on it, I think a lot of it was, I felt out of control with the success and, and also many other things in my life at the same time, when my business was taking off, my son had yes. a horrible accident where he was injured and in a wheelchair for six weeks. And so I was also a caretaker yeah. during this time. And oh, so I look back I that the day that happened, Cameron came home from the gym, like ghost white. I mean, <laughs> honest, Bless his heart. that your sweet yes. boy went through. I mean, what I mean, it was compound fracture. He had to have mm-hmm. how many surgeries to and uh, I was actually only one he but he is he had knee surgery and then at the same time he also compound fracture in his wrist i'm probably saying it all wrong my husband will probably go back and listen to this and be like what are you talking about (laughs) all i know is there it was he was very hurt he was very broken when we picked him up and it was heartbreaking and he was in so much pain which is horrible to live through but praise god he is good as new almost and he healed so fast But anyway, that happened. Okay. So right before or kind of during when my business was growing so quickly, my daughter left for college that August. Um, Ben's accident was the week before she left. And so, yeah. And it was also right before he was supposed to get his driver's license. Um, Yeah. So the timing of it was just kind of made it more of a struggle even um, for me. And And honestly, I didn't. I was just running on adrenaline, you know, I was just in go mode trying to do everything and didn't realize that it was as traumatic as it was, you know, it's like looking back that I'm like, gosh, I felt so out of control and in turn try to control every detail, you know, like I almost enjoyed the fact that he depended on me for everything, you know, like yeah. to bring him every meal, to give him a bath, to take the lid off the tube of toothpaste because he had his arm in a full cast. And so, and he, with his knee surgery, had to have his legs straight and stabilized. And anyway, he couldn't use crutches because of that, which is why he was in a wheelchair. And so dropping him off at school for the first time in a wheelchair, oh, that was like, dramatic. yeah, just, and you're like, well, who, who's going to help him? Like if he needs to go to the bathroom or take him from class to class. And they're like, oh, somebody will help him. It'll be okay. <laughs> oh my gosh which is so how it life, is so your life is really i mean you were really feeling i mean legitimately 
things are exploding in multiple areas, not always, you know, good, some bad, but I mean, lots going on. And lots going on. And I, I don't, I look back and I'm like, I don't know how I did everything I did. Like I, I knew Annie Grace wanted this gorgeous dorm room, you know, design talked about it. I was sewing, I was sewing pillows. I learned how to make ruffles and sew pillows. Like I don't, I don't even sew really, but like I was so determined to make this room special for her. And so, yeah, I moved her to college by myself because Brian had to stay with Ben because he was hurt. And this is, the reason for this is not for me. I'm not complaining or saying like, I know there are people that, that live through way worse and, Yes. You know, he's great now and he's healed. And anyway, but I know life just felt really out of control. And, and so I ended up with kind of some eating issues, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. yeah. which it's, I wouldn't say eating disorder because I'm not like diagnosed, like there's not a doctor involved here. Like this is all kind of God working on me and my heart and showing me. Yeah. And so I ended up at the beginning. I think I just pushed so hard for so many months that your body can only handle it for so long. You know, like if you don't take a break. Well, I was just going to say, so whenever you say, okay, so some eating, so there was some eating issues. What you said you would skip meals, right? I would skip meals. I had tons of rules about when I was going to eat, you know, like an eating window, you know, like you do with keto and fasting and all that. Um, I wasn't eating grains or dairy, or it was more like an elimination of certain food groups was kind of how this manifested for me. So I haven't eaten gluten for a long time. And so that's something that I still don't eat. But I just, it kind of leads you to starting to cut out other things. It kind of led me down that path. So like, Mm -hmm. I didn't do alcohol, I didn't do sugar, I didn't. And you know, I went to visit a friend and hang out with her at her house. And she's like, let's get the champagne out. And she's getting off the snacks and the champagne. And, and I'm like, oh, I don't really do that. And I don't really do that. And she's like, well, how about some peanuts and a Diet Coke? Well, I don't do artificial sweetener. And peanuts really disagree with me. <laughs> you know? And it's like, Good what have I turned into? Rules. Like all these <laughs> rules. Yes, I had. And I think part of it goes back to kind of my personality and my Enneagram one, which is the moral perfectionist. We love our rules and sticking to them. And, and that was me. Like, it, like you said, it was kind of an idol, like, um, and I had gotten to where it caused me a lot of anxiety too. all these rules, you know, like I would be so hungry. I would come home and stand and look in the pantry and be like, what do I eat? Yeah. Like there's nothing that's not, uh, that's not, that doesn't hurt my stomach or that's off limits, you know, like even a handful of almonds. Well, that had started hurting my stomach. And I honestly think that so many foods were disagreeing with me because I had so much anxiety. It was like anxiety and hunger were sort of one in the same for me. Um, Felt the same, you know, how anxiety will kind of gnaw on your stomach. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just felt a lot of anxiety about meals, you know, making meals for my family, whenever I knew I wasn't going to eat any of that. And so I was having to make two separate meals whenever I did eat. And I don't want, I think a lot of people hear like disordered eating and they think, well, she's not that skinny, you know, she's not anorexic or, you know, she doesn't look like an eating disorder, but there's so many different types mm-hmm. Yes. that, yes. you know, there's so many different ways. It's not just anorexia or bulimia, you know, I wasn't no. doing any of that. Um, but it was still very much. No, I was just going to say, you kind of backed yourself into a corner. Yeah, most definitely. Like, I mean, I'm my own worst enemy. And I think that, um, I just really got in my own way. And so I ended up just kind of, it kind of trashed my health, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And so by the, by the time I finally did take a break this summer at the beginning of the summer, like, I had gotten to the point where I couldn't, I felt like there wasn't anything that I could eat without my stomach hurting and I was gaining weight and I felt like I was still, you know, following all the rules and it was so unfair that I didn't look the way I was supposed to look for how in control I was of Mm -hmm. my eating. And sadly, I think it was my appearance that bothered me the most that, that, 
I felt pressure to look a certain way to be visible on Instagram for one. Um, and I put that pressure on myself no matter what, honestly, like I'm just the kind of person that generally I won't leave the house unless I've done a certain, you know, bit of work to myself. <laughs> you always look good. I have, I mean, like you, when we go to basketball games, I mean, we were kidding before, like about, you know, like whenever we would show up at basketball games, y'all, she would be like, just perfectly, like perfectly coordinated down to the shoes. And y'all I'm throwing on like my under armor and my jeans and like, I'm looking like a hoodlum. Okay? And those were my grungy days. Like Saturday's my dirtiest hair day. And like, it's just like a that grungy was day. your dirtiest yes. day? Yes. Oh my gosh, girl. Oh my gosh. Well, because you know, Sunday morning is hair washing day. So yes, by Saturday, yeah. you're pretty drag out. <laughs> So love you. Well, it, it, so it, I mean, so you're out of, I mean, basically your things are spiraling out of control. It looks good. It looks like everything on the outside. That's what's so crazy is had you not texted me and said, girl, I got a story for you. I mean, I'm watching your Instagram blow up. I'm watching, I mean, so much happen for you. And yet on the inside, you were crumbling. So when did you, what was the bottom? Everybody has a different bottom, but what was, do you have a, was there a moment where you knew there, I got a problem here? Yeah. I, I felt like I was constantly looking for answers for how to fix myself. Like I was a project. And so I just kind of dove into, I was nonstop listening to again, YouTube videos or whatever I could find to research like what, what's the next supplement I need to buy or what's the next diet I need to try. And I just, I felt like I prayed for God to send, like send me a doctor or somebody to help me, you know? And, and so a friend of mine had told me about a functional medicine practitioner in Odessa that was a friend, you know, a friend of hers and that had helped somebody she knew. And, and so I called her, I set up like a, consultation with her and talked to her on the phone and and she said I can't believe I, it's I know it was God working through her she said have you prayed for healing and I said no I don't like to really need healing like I'm not injured <laughs> I'm not injured I'm I'm okay you know but I think that We all need healing, you know, we do. We all do. And so it really struck me what she said. I mean, a complete stranger mm -hmm. in this phone call said that. And so I immediately got off the phone and, and I hit my knees in the bedroom and I prayed for healing. And, and that kind of started a road, God just opening my eyes to all of this, because I, I mean, at that point, I had no idea that the way I was eating was in, you know, was, was stressing my body like it was, or, you know, wasn't good for me. I thought I was doing so fantastic. And that was so unfit. Life was so unfair that nothing was working anymore, you know? <laughs> and let's just say, I mean, y'all don't know my history, but like, I've always been a person that have been on top of my appearance, my eating, my, like every diet that's out there, I have tried it. Like I've been a lifelong eater. Um, you know, I've tried it all the blood type diet. The, um, yeah. I, you can ask me pretty much the calories in any food out there and I will be able to tell you how many calories are in it. Um, it's just, the, and I think a lot of women are that way. Yes. Like it's just the way we're programmed. Um, and so, Anyway, I prayed that prayer and it was through kind of my quiet time and reading my Bible in the weeks to come um, that my eyes were opened to this. And it was, I don't remember exactly what verse it was, but it was, I was reading, I think it was in Matthew. Um, and it's where the Pharisees are trying to bust Jesus working on the, um, working on the Sabbath. Oh yeah. I think he healed somebody and yeah. the Pharisees he were like, no. At the, yeah. At the fountain. Yeah. Okay. And the Pharisees all about, they're all about the rules. And I, I mean, I didn't like actually hear God's voice, but he basically told me, don't be like the Pharisees. And, you know, there's no way that that could have come out of my mind, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And so that's when I just kind of started 
assessing my life and my priorities and realizing that, you know, they were, they were out of whack. And so this has started, this is kind of a process and it's not something that I'm done with. And I don't know that I ever will be one to say that I've like conquered this whole eating thing or body image thing or have it figured out, but I'm making a lot of progress. And I guess I just wanted to come out and talk about it because I think if it's something that I'm struggling with, that so many people probably are. (laughs) I think that our, I feel a lot of anger, I think, toward our society for programming girls this way, Mm. you know, to be, to always be pleasant, you know, to always be, to feel like we owe everyone such a pleasant experience of seeing us or being around us, you know, it's like, it's okay to go out without the makeup or, and we don't have to apologize for that. Like, and so there was definitely a phase where I was like, this is unfair that we feel this pressure and imagine what we could accomplish. Imagine what, how much more maybe I could have accomplished if I hadn't been, had that running narrative in my mind in the background while I was running this business and caring for my family and then also overthinking food, you know? Yes. Well, in, in our, our, I love how our, you know, have you ever read the book, the body keeps score or have you ever heard of the, there's a book called the body keeps score and it talks about how I mean it's a very you probably would not have read it because you know I'm the science nerd here between the two of us and it's really like a deep dive on like what the body actually remembers and Mm -hmm. we hold on to traumas we hold on to moments in our lives that have happened to us that affect our self-conscious our self our self-confidence or you know like people who have experienced like traumas of war what Mm -hmm. what that does to certain organs of the body well i think as women we get the memo that you know we need to look at we look we need to do the best with what we got i think that that's Mm -hmm. the memo overarching memo and you know as a christian you know, what, what's our response to that? What's our, like, what's our responsibility to ourselves and to the girls in our home? Because we both have daughters. We know mm-hmm. how hard it is to live in this world where there's so much pressure all the time. And for someone like you who is educated, intelligent, running a business, doing really well, to fall into a trap of, because it was a trap. I mean, the enemy was mm-hmm. trapping you. You Oh, absolutely. He, he knew totally, how to get me. Oh, he knew your weakness, <laughs> sister. So it's no surprise that he goes after self-confidence and body image. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, for all of us, you and I have different struggles, but we both have them. Mm-hmm. Um, when when you were struggling, when you were at your worst and you, you said, okay, I got to, something's got to give here and you hit your knees did you just do just like let go of all your rules like what how because you're you're an enneagram one i just do not see you like throwing all the rules out the window my family i think my family was like what in the world so i kind of like i like to call it i undieted my life i really did undiet it like i I had all this stuff all this stuff that i had not allowed myself to have for years I freely ate, like I did it, man. And it's okay, and what I was think your that favorite thing. What was, what was the thing you were like? I'm going to eat this now. So I'm not a huge sweets person, mm-hmm. but bluebell homemade vanilla is very much like a childhood homey, cozy kind of food. I'm like I'm a salty, crunchy girl, so I ate a lot of potato chips. <laughs> um, and so I didn't realize this, but that's actually how when they treat eating disorders, that's actually a lot of what they do. And they call it food habituation where like they, you can just have as much of that prohibited food as you want, because then you kind of have it. And then it loses its appeal whenever it's not restricted any longer, because I was such a huge restrictor that always results in kind of binging too. And so And I did struggle with that. And I think, honestly, a lot of people do. Like, I know a lot of people in my life that that will say that they do. And it's just biological. You know, you cannot restrict your body 
and not have some sort of a response, you know, response to it. Yeah. It's, and so I, I did, I, I had this whole summer, like on trips, whatever, like I ate whatever I wanted. I, I drank, I did like things that I hadn't allowed myself to do in so long, but mainly it was things that I think that were like childhood comfy foods that I went toward more than anything. And, and the funny thing is the stuff that I ate so much of then, like I have no, I don't want it at all now. Really? Like, just, I don't, like, I like, think yeah. about ice cream right now and I have no, it doesn't hold any power over me anymore now that it's not prohibited. Yes. Um, yes. And so, and I do know there are certain things that will make me feel bad. And that's generally like, I mean, there are still food groups that I avoid because they make me feel bad, but it's not because it's a rule that I don't eat it, you know? Yes. <clears throat> yes. You've, you've taken away the, I can't, and you've gone to an, just a different, you've come back to the middle of what does my body actually need instead mm-hmm. of what, what, I can't do this or I can't. Were you, I, I'm curious, you, you know, you said you have always been, you know, very preoccupied with making sure you look good and, and dieting. Mm-hmm. How, how early did that start for you in your life? You know, that is a good question. I think that my mom has always been really polished and put together. So I've always had such a great example of that. I also think that I grew, I have a twin sister. And so growing up with a twin, you're very, this sounds dramatic, but you're kind of objectified. People constantly assess you from head to toe. They're looking, they're comparing you to look at your differences. And so that might factor into it a little bit, I think is just kind of, being really looked at my entire life for that. And I think it's just, I never, I didn't have like a critical mother of me or anything like that, but I've always just had really high standards for myself. It wasn't like anybody else had these high standards. Yeah. Okay. I just, I didn't, I wondered if, you know, like I remember being in high school and uh, doing the cabbage diet. Does anybody else remember the cat? Do you know? Okay. That is one I did not do, but I know what it is. (laughs) It was like, I just remember, I think I made it like all of like 48 hours. I think I was, I don't know, junior junior or senior in high school and I think it was prom season I was like oh I should probably I don't know why I was so skinny I had no idea how skinny I was oh what is that saying like I wish I was as fat as I was or as skinny as I was back when I thought I was fat or something like that yes same yes (laughs) Yes. well I did I remember doing that when I was I mean yeah I was probably 17 18 years old and that started early in my life I mean when I say early, I mean, I remember thinking things about food, even in junior high, even, you know, Mm -hmm. just, well, is that going to make me fat? Or should I eat that? And I mean, we are, we just, we have, I just, the enemy gets at us so early in life, so early. So I just Mm -hmm. wondered when yours was that critical voice. Well, and I come from a long line of dieters. So I remember like my grandmother, my mom's mom, who I adored and spent a ton of time with, was always on a diet, Mm -hmm. always. Nutrisystem, Weight Watchers, and my mom was the same way. Like always, I think that I grew up believing that if I didn't work hard to control it, that it would just spiral out of control. You know, like my body has no intuition of its own, you know, like it's, it's yes. bad and it wants to eat all the bad things. So I have to control it, which is so not the case. <laughs> no, it's not. And I, I know my mom did not mean well, you know, we get a lot of our, our early messages from our parents. And I don't, I, I, it sounds like your mom was very kind and gracious. And she was trying, I've seen plenty of your mama. I think I've met her once too at a basketball <laughs> game. She is just lovely. Just for the record. She's pretty special. She's yeah. So and she has special. quite the fan base on Instagram too. Uh, like people yes. love seeing what she wears and they like, will run off and buy it. <laughs> like every time I see what she's wearing, I'm like, I want to be that put together whenever I am a, like a grandmother someday. She's just adorable. But she's so creative. Get, yeah. Oh, yeah, she totally is. But the mess in the messages that we get sometimes from our moms, we don't mean they don't mean to give us negative things. And I remember my mom struggled with her weight. I mean, her entire life, she was she was overweight. I mean, 
from my my entire my entire life she really 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 struggled and I hated it for her but I remember one day she's multiple times but I remember one time I was sitting between her legs and she was curling my hair before school Mm -hmm. okay and I don't even know what we were talking about that led to it but she says to me one day she said Christy don't be fat like me and and I just I mean like you don't unhear something like that Mm -mm. that's a message you carry and she didn't tell me hey be healthy hey make good food choices hey work Mm -hmm. out she didn't she didn't but she didn't have that and you know we we say around here a lot you can't give what you don't have but all she had to give me was don't be fat like me Mm -hmm. And that still, honestly, that still haunts me, Terry. Like, it breaks my heart for her, for all the struggles she had physically, and how much that her weight affected the rest of her life. And I think it, no matter what the scale says, your weight affects a lot of the rest of our lives. When you reached out and said, hey, I I think we need to talk about this, I, I intentionally created a space in early November so that this episode can come out before the holidays because that's a good idea food is so you know that's the thing about having food issues and struggles is you can't live without food food is part of we have to have it and so as we close out today you know just kind of wrapping up I would love to hear your thoughts from from where you have been and where you are now somebody who might be struggling right now there's there's somebody out there listening right now that is where you were and they have created Mm -hmm. so many rules for themselves and they are trying so hard to live a life of perfection and they've set the standard of perfection they can't achieve what what do you tell that person i think i would tell them to show themselves some compassion and some kindness i think i had gotten to where I was so programmed to ignore my body and what it needed. Like I didn't even go to the bathroom and my body was telling me I needed to go to the bathroom. Like so many things were, is just kind of a domino effect of just, you know, not showing my body or myself any compassion. It was just like, I was seeing how much harder I could push myself, you know? And so I think compassion would be one of the main things that I think I could encourage people to find for themselves. I think also to, I think that I had to kind of reassess what, what mirror I was looking into, you know, like as somebody who's obsessed with looking right from every angle on camera or in a mirror or whatever, like I was definitely one of those that was like an analyzer, you know, like turn, sure the outfit looks good from the front, but I'd always turn to the side and then criticize myself, you know, because my stomach sticks out or whatever. And so I'm trying to learn to see myself in a different mirror, you know, and I feel like God's word has been that, has been that mirror for me. Yes. And so diving into that has been, I think would be, I mean, if somebody asked me if they were struggling with this and, and really wanted to know, I mean, I think that would be the first thing I would tell them is to, to prioritize that time and and he will take you on a journey and he will heal you you know yes yes and it's okay to reach out for help you know you Mm -hmm. you reached out to a functional medicine doctor if if somebody needs help there he will heal you and he will heal you from the inside out and it will be a process it's it is a process but but let let him use the tools and resources we have at our disposal. And if you need help, get help. That's for sure. You know, and I'm, I'm so freaking proud of you. (laughs) Oh, Um, thank you. Not, not just the success of, of Grace Harris, but because of owning the entire journey and embracing that it, you had to take care of you you taking care of yourself is the greatest gift you could give yourself and your family, but yourself first. Well, I appreciate you giving me a platform to, you know, talk about this. And it really, 
like it changes things for me. These, this mental shift for me changes going forward. Like how do I present myself in, in my work? You know, I don't, I don't want to be this influencer or this figure that's like, look at this perfect table I set, Mm -hmm. you know, just setting things up to take a picture. Like I'm not going to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know if you've noticed that I don't really post outfits anymore, but if I have something really good, I will, Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to force myself to put together something to post. And that's, and there's a lot of money in that. (laughs) And so it is a difficult thing to walk away from, but I don't, I just have to really, um, I, I want to be able, I don't, Instagram and the, and the platform for my work is very curated and very, and I think maybe that's why I did enjoy some parts of it is because you can really polish things up and put the filter on and, you know, curate that perfect thing. And so I don't, I don't want to do that going, you know, of course I'll put out beautiful content, but I'm going to purposely make myself (laughs) put something out that is not a hundred percent perfect, you know, like I need to start even, even my voice. Like I, I'm so critical of my voice. So uh, like I did a few videos with voiceovers and I was like, Oh, I'm never going to do that again. That's so cringy. What? Like I'm going to start making myself do the uncomfortable stuff like that. You know, yeah. you know what? And yeah, so, the, the real you is beautiful. <laughs> the real you is invaluable. <clears throat> and well, I feel the same way about you. And seeing and seeing your journey too is so inspiring. Well, it's it's a journey. That's the thing is that we you know we all have an instrument that we can use as a way to worship the Lord. <laughs> you have a creativity and a gift of being able to pull things together in spaces that that other people can't do, and that's your instrument of worship, and you do it so so very well. I, I'm going to challenge you to even go a step further. And I don't care what size jeans you wear, get in front of that camera and show people how beautiful you are. Thank just you. the way you are. Yeah, I got to do some shopping. Because <laughs> there's a lot that doesn't fit. <laughs> who cares? Girl? Which I'm okay with. Yes. Yeah. Were, okay. So you were telling about we were talking before the we started recording. She is if you're just listening to this, and you're not watching it on YouTube. She's in this beautiful dress. And she just is beautiful. Y'all, she is absolutely stunning. It's and it's I, my design too. Actually, I, I will point out. I, I see. I mean, I, I recognize the dress. It's, it's stunning. And I'm over here Thank in you. my ripped jeans. I'm literally wearing Amazon ripped jeans and a sheen shirt. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm seriously. Amazon jeans. I'm going to need to know about these. <laughs> oh, are you serious? Like, I love me some Amazon jeans. I'll, I'll send you the link. But like, Thank you. this is just the way I'm but I don't, we were talking about how like perfectly put together she was. And I was like, yeah, I'm in my jeans and my t-shirt y'all, but just be who you are. And because I'm telling you, the world needs more people saying, I love to pull this together and I love this to be beautiful, but I'm not always put together and that's Mm -hmm. okay. And I don't have it all together. I mean, you know how many of us are under the assumption that whatever every whenever they put out these videos about how perfect you know life is and how (laughs) behind the scenes it's entirely different i mean yeah they i mean you may not even have pants on right now like we don't even know maybe i don't maybe i don't okay (laughs) who knows My husband is dying at that right now. He's like, (laughs) she's podcasting half naked. (laughs) We can't take her anywhere. (laughs) I really do think that you and I both have learned the same thing in the last couple of years. And it's that there's, there's value in the things that light you up. And it may not be exactly the career path that you're on right now, but you can kind of find those things that, you can pursue those things and make something out of it. You know, you don't have to stay just because you've done one thing for 20 years. Like you don't have to stick with that. Like you can do whatever you want. And there's people that will, and there's an audience out there for it. That's what's so wonderful about the times we're living in. It's like, how have I found such an audience 
for people that love bows and ruffles and you know vintage stuff and you know uh, uh, but I found my people you have found your people and, and you have to you. and and I'm one of your people I, oh. I love I mean I listen to every episode as soon as it hits and so sweet. Well, I'm I'm a huge I'm a fan, fan. Of yours too, my friend. I think it, we could have a mutual love fest all day. But I, think I know we could. I hope just... I hope everybody enjoys that. <laughs> <laughs> I love how God has wired us together, and I I'm gonna I'm just gonna wrap up by saying this: your bravery today is gonna give somebody else the courage they need to take the next step in their life. And that has ripple effects that will you and I will never see. And so I just, yeah, from a very tender place in me, and I'm getting emotional. I didn't think I would, but you're the best, man. Oh, you too. I've loved our time together so much. Thank you we need to get together. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> We do need to get together. Better. Here we are just crying together. I know. We're, video. If y'all aren't I mean, we're just, there's tears flowing today. But just, <laughs> I, think, I think whenever I hear people's stories and I don't know them as well as I do, this one probably hits a little bit different because you're, you're just, you're one of my people and I adore you. No, you're one of mine. Yes. You're my sister. And, yep. Yep. Sister from another mister. Um, <laughs> and I adore you. I'm proud of you. And friends, we're going to link a whole lot of resources wherever you're listening to this. I want you to go in your notes section, wherever you're listening to this, if you need help, if if you need some some ways to get help with, with whatever food struggles you're having, I'm going to put a lot of resources. And I have resources I would love to recommend to like some books and podcasts I've, that have been invaluable. Okay, send those to me, and we will I add will. those to the, to the notes as well. Friends, I want you to take care of yourselves. I want you to just be mindful of whatever the Lord is prompting in you through this conversation today. And I, I will be praying for everyone who hears this podcast as this is going to gonna hit home for a lot of people. So you friends, I just adore y'all, and good Lord willing, I will see you next week. Hmm. Thanks, Terry. I appreciate you. You bet.